All right, guys. So somebody pointed out to me yesterday that there was a lot of stuff in here that wasn't fast tracked. So I went through today and I fast tracked everything. So I kept track of everything that I fast tracked on the DAO one. There were 15 nodes that were fast tracked and on the copy uh, motion variant, I fast tracked 33 nodes. So yeah, there were, there were quite a few on the uh, copy motion one, but that was still under heavy construction as uh, some of y'all that have been following this should have known. So uh, anyway, I fixed an interpolation lag on the pitch aim offsets. I had the uh, smoothing on those aim offsets inside of those animations, wherever they are. Anyway, I had them uh, set to 50. I had the value set to 15. I set it to 30 for faster uh, smoothing interpolation. Uh, I actually fast fast tracked the uh, motion uh, matching uh, blend stat graph, which they did not have fast tracked. So I fast tracked the orientation warping, the steering, uh, these two steering nodes as well. The reset root transform was already fast tracked. So that's all taking place inside of this update uh, event graph right here so that we can fast track these uh, on those nodes. So there's that. I did that on both the copy motion and the DAO variant. Anywhere else that I saw there wasn't a fast track. I fast tracked it. You'll see these are fast tracked now as well. Um, everything in here was already fast tracked. Uh, the linked anim layers, I fast tracked everything in there. So some of these, like probably about 50% of these numbers here are probably just from linked anim layers. So you guys know. I went inside the linked anim layers and I fast tracked everything inside of here that wasn't uh, fast tracked before. And everything inside of the overlay states are now is now fast tracked. This as well. Let's go back to the DAO. Yeah, so I fast tracked that as well. Um, I, on this one, yeah, so I think this was already fast tracked, even though I had the node right here, uh, you can still do a property access and get fast tracked if the property is local. Uh, so apparently if the property is not local, if you have to fetch it, even if it's from property access, if you have to fetch it from a external uh, blueprint, then it will not be considered fast tracked unless you bind it from inside of the node itself, like I did here. Uh, now, so I didn't actually have to do it this way, but I did it anyway, uh, like that. So the aim offset is actually being updated in here. You can read the information on it. I removed the stuff from the blueprint thread safe that I wasn't needing. So there's no more uh, spine being done right here. You could still do it right here and that would probably be fine. But uh, because I was doing it on the other one from right here, I decided to do it on both on both of them from right here. And that's fine it still gets executed on a worker thread, just like it would if you did on the blueprint thread safe update animation. The only difference is, is that this one gets uh, evaluated before the graph, uh, anim graph is executed, whereas doing it inside of here, it happens based off of the order of operation. So if you get something, if you get the value of the offset root bone from before, the offset root bone, you're going to get a different value than if you get it from after it. It doesn't actually really cause any problems. Uh, there might be just a slight bit of latency, uh, but it, it'll be so small that 
it won't even be noticeable by anyone. So it doesn't actually matter if you get the aim offset before or after the offset root bone, uh, just so you guys know. Inside of here, I'm actually getting the previous frames uh, root transform location. And even though that I'm executing this during the, the anim graph and only when the IAO gets executed, and that happens after the offset root bone, it still actually evaluates it based off the last frame. And in case you're confused as to why, uh, the reason why is because all of those values I'm using for that calculation, let's see, all of these values I use in this calculation get, ex get uh, updated at the beginning of the frame before the anim graph runs. Uh, so that's the reason why. Um, that might be a little confusing to y'all, but by the time it gets to this node, this variable actually doesn't get updated until after this, until after it outputs, and then before it starts back over again. So, but it's not a big deal. Like I said, there, if there is any latency there, it's so minuscule that it's not even noticeable. So I was using this method. I decided to use this one because it's lighter. Also because I need to clamp it and then divide it by six. It's, I tried to keep uh, the math as light as possible and keep these the number of nodes here as few as possible. Uh, so that's the reason why I decided to go with this method instead of this one. I'm trying to cut performance as much as I can where I can, but in some cases it's kind of hard to avoid. I left this here because I'm not 100% sure which one of these methods is actually more performance friendly. When I used this method, I had to clamp the angle uh, on both of them uh, to prevent an issue. But I don't remember that being an issue when I used this one. So if that's the case, then neither one of these methods is probably any heavier than the other uh, to any good sized margin. Right. So like I said, everything in here is fast tracked now. Now I couldn't fast track this because you can't bind uh, you can't bind anything to the weights right here and hooking it up right here doesn't actually fast track it. That's a seems to be a limitation of the layered blend per bone. And so I got around that by just doing it like this because we actually don't need to evaluate this at all if we're in an unarmed state. And so having this extra node here actually might make it a little bit more performant. This got fast tracked. This got fast tracked. The curve is actually being uh, set right here inside of the node. I did not expose it, uh, so don't let that confuse you. Over here on this one, basically the same thing. I fast-tracked everything. Uh, that stuff was fast-tracked already. This wasn't fast-tracked. None of this was fast-tracked. This wasn't fast-tracked. None of, uh, oh, there was a lot of stuff in here that wasn't fast-tracked as well. I went over that. And so right here, all that stuff was fast tracked. I used the same method here. And then right here, the, the hand L joint target offset, it's being set inside of here in the update CM data. Right here, this is where all that stuff is being updated. 
And so you'll see this right here. And I did replace, I removed the need for those game, those enums. So I was using enums and I was using a workaround to get the enums for the DAO. I removed all the stuff from the DAO that we're not using in the copy motion as well, guys. Uh, let me show you what I did in here. So uh, in the update states, you'll see I'm no long, I no longer have that function right here. I just have this collapsed graph and it's just, uh, we got this gameplay tag container here and I'm removing the, the last uh, one and then I'm adding the current one to it. And so inside of here, now we're using gameplay tags to select our layering data asset for the DAO layering settings. Um, yeah, so you can go to properties here and you'll see I have this set to any and that just means that any that are inside of this container, if any of these inside of this container match, then it's good. Uh, I tried this before and it didn't work, but that's because I tried to do it from a pure thread safe function, which normally works inside of here, but apparently it doesn't seem to work if you create, if you make a gameplay tag container using a helper function, you can't do that. Uh, it won't read it inside of here for whatever reason. So that's the reason why, that's the reason why I created, I created a new variable of type gameplay tag container and I'm adding and removing them, adding and removing them. So that explains that in case any of you guys need to set up stuff like that for choosers from an enum or from anywhere really. Choosers can be used anywhere guys in case you weren't aware. And yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up. So Last night I was uh, laying in bed and I came to a realization It just kind of popped into my head. Uh, sometimes that happens, but I was wondering, I was like, there's got to be a good reason why the order of operation for the offset root bone matters. And it's actually, once you know it, you know it, it's obvious, but this whole and this whole setup is so odd to me uh, that they came out with for this motion matching. So it's it's been throwing me off for a while now. It's definitely not a conventional setup. So just to explain it to you guys, basically what's happening, and I haven't even tested this, but if I uh, come over here and I'll toggle, I'll toggle a pose right here on this motion matching. And if we, if I were to say toggle a pose inside of one of these as well. So let's say the pistol, I can just toggle this pose before I rotate it. And this should, let's see, do I have it? No. So I'll have to stop the game real quick. I should have put these in the outside folder and I, I don't know why I did that. Um, to be honest with you, I'll probably rearrange it at some point, but anyway. So you're not going to see it until I pull out the pistol for one and I set these. And now we should see it. So this is why. So both of these are basically pre 
offset root bone, and you'll see that they're always facing the direction that the capsule is facing. Uh, they're always facing that direction. So whenever the offset root bone is applied, it will counter rotate this, and I'll show you. So if I toggle the pose watch for that one, it'll counter rotate that pose uh, to keep it in place, you see? And so if you do your layering before the offset root bone, then it automatically counter rotates that as well. And so the method that I had to use for applying this after the offset root bone, it required me to manually rotate it since this happened after the offset root bone, since it was being applied after that. Since it was being applied after that, I had to manually do it because the offset root bone wasn't counter rotating it for me. So I hope that explains uh, this, how that works. I was really confused and I kept thinking I understood it, but I actually didn't. And last night that really cleared it up for me. So I did. I haven't even verified it until just now, uh, as I talk to you guys. But I just knew when, when the ideal popped into my head, it was just like a sudden realization. I knew uh, that's what I was uh, uh, missing. So that's how that works, guys. It's an order of operation thing. And I will see you in the next video. That's basically it.